All right guys, so this is gonna be our first video of probably three videos covering the topics of chapter nine. So this is chapter nine, and the main focus of um, chapter nine is linear momentum, but that's actually not where we're gonna to start today. We're gonna to start by talking about a related concept, which is, no, which is the center of mass, center of mass. Center of mass means probably what you would think it would mean if you have a group of objects that you, we can locate the, the center of mass of the objects um, by doing a sort of like a weighted average, as we'll see. So maybe just to, um, to start with a really, really simple example, let's imagine I've got a, um, I've got a, like we could think of this as an x-axis if we like, and I've got two particles on this x-axis. And maybe we'll say, here's particle of mass m, and here's another particle of mass m, and we'll say that this uh, first mass is located at x equals uh, zero, and we'll say that this one is located at x equals, I don't know, one meter. And we want to know where is the center of mass of the two particles. I think you can kind of get a sense for where the center of mass would be. It would be, in this case, right in the middle. It would be, the center of mass would be right here. I could say x center of mass, um, I'll try to write this a little bit more clearly, x center of mass is equal to then 0.5 meters. And this, by the way, this COM cent is, is the abbreviation that I use and that is frequently used for center of mass. So this would then be, I think it's fairly clear, the center of mass of the system. Now, um, to try to understand why we care about center of mass, why we would learn about it, um, you could imagine that this system, imagine if these two particles, the two blue particles, this one, this little guy over here and this one over here, imagine that they are free to move. You could imagine that they might move um, due to some forces between them, and um, it could be a complicated motion. But it turns out that the center of mass will not change provided there's no external force on the system. In other words, we can treat now this two, uh, we could treat this system, I'll think of this as my system, I can treat this two mass system, I could reduce the two mass system, so the system can be reduced to a point particle, point particle, particle located at the center of mass. And that's a really, really helpful fact to, um, to bring to bear in problem solving. And I think you'll see um, when, we get, when, when we get to some problems that there are, there are certain situations where thinking about a, a, a system, like a, a, a complicated object or a series of objects, treating that system as a, uh, as a point particle located at the center of mass can make your life really, really easy. So if we get back to this example, the example I gave here where you had these two particles locating the center of mass was just like, was pretty trivial. But I wanna note what we did here so that we could do the same thing to maybe some more complicated systems. So to locate the center of mass, mass which I'll call x com, what we did is we averaged, and you probably didn't think of it this way, although maybe you did, we averaged out, took what's called a weighted average of the two masses in question. So we take, the first mass, I'll, maybe I'll just for simplicity's sake, I'll call this M1 and I'll call this M2. So what we can do is we could say M1 times X1 plus M2 times X2 all over the total mass M1 plus M2. Um, so without thinking about it, that's sort of what you did. We sort of averaged these out. So M1 X1 is, um, was zero, uh, M2 X2 was m times one, and then the total mass was two, and so we ended up with an xcom of, or sorry, two m. So we ended up with an xcom of m over two m, which is one over two, or 0.5 meters. And this is now, uh, uh, this equation for the weighted average is an equation we can now bring to bear to calculate center of mass for any objects or, or series of objects. So it might be worth maybe thinking about a, um, a more complicated case to kind of see how this would work for a series of point particles. So let's imagine I've got now a two-dimensional system. So I've got a y-axis and an x-axis, and I'm going to start plopping down some masses. So I'll say this is m1, 
M1 is uh, two kilograms. And I'll put an M2 over here, which will be three kilograms. Um, and I'll have an M3 up here, which will just be one kilogram. And maybe I'll assign some values here. This, this right here, this will be, uh, so we'll assume that this is the origin zero, zero, and we'll assume that this is um, uh, X coordinate we'll say is, uh, well, let's say it's uh, two meters. And we'll say that this position right here, X is three meters. Sorry, Y is three meters. Try to make that neater. Y equals three meters. And I want to know where is the center of mass. And you might sort of be able to intuit that it's going to be, you know, I don't know, somewhere, you know, somewhere down in this region here, right? But we don't know exactly where. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the same expression that we had back up here, this expression, this, this so-called weighted average, but I'm going to, but I have to do it in two dimensions, right? I have to do it for the X direction and I have to do it for the Y direction. So let's go ahead and do the XCOM first. So I'm gonna say XCOM, center of mass, X center of mass. Um, this is actually gonna be pretty easy because if I note M1 and M3 both have an X coordinate of zero. So they're gonna zero out. So I'm gonna have like, um, uh, if I start doing it, so M, the contribution from M1 is gonna be zero because the X is zero. The contribution from M2 is gonna be three times two. And the contribution from M3 is gonna be zero because its X coordinate was zero. And the combined mass here is six. So I'm gonna get three times two is six over six. So this is gonna be just one meter. So I know now that the, the center of mass is somewhere in this line where X is equal to one meter. But now I have to figure out, okay, what is the Y center of mass? Um, now, if I think about Y center of mass, if I think about now M1 and M2 have a Y value of zero. So if I go back up to our expression that we had up here, oop, I didn't mean to move that. Maybe I'll try to move this guy down so we can refer to it a little bit more easily. If I take a look here, um, for M1 and M2, the Y value is gonna be zero, so those are gonna zero out. So now, to go back, to calculate the Y column, I'm gonna have zero for M1, a zero contribution for M2, and a contribution of three times one for M3. Three times one, all over six, and that's gonna give me a Y com of 0.5. So now I can say, all right, the here is the Y equals 0.5, and the intersection point right here then is gonna be the center of mass, which is gonna be 1.5, okay? So fairly straightforward way for a series of particles. Uh, Hopefully that makes sense. And again, this is we, one way of thinking about this is, is to think about it again as a weighted average. What I'd like to do now is to think about how you would calculate the center of mass for a more complicated situation. So let's imagine, and this is considerably more complicated, let's imagine I have an x-axis now. And on this x-axis, I have um, a long, thin rod like this, okay? So I've got this long, thin rod, and um, I would like to, and I'm going to assume something that might be, so first of all, let's, uh, it, just to deal with something that might be obvious, if this rod were uniform, that, would, that is to say if the density is, were constant for this rod, um, then I think it might be obvious that the center of mass would be located in the geometric center. In other words, if this were like, let's say that this rod has a mass m and a length l, if the density is uniform, if it's u uniform density, then you'd just guess that the center of mass would be right in the middle of the thing. And you would be right to guess that. 
But I'm interested now in the more interesting case, which is what if we have this M and L, but what if the density isn't uniform? So maybe I'll just um, call this point right here for the sake of simplicity. I'll call this X equals zero, and I'll call the other end X equals L. And maybe the linear density of this thing, uh, which is linear density is abbreviated lambda. This is the Greek letter lambda and it stands in for linear density. Maybe the linear density of this rod is not constant. Maybe the, maybe the mass per unit length increases. Um, and so what we could say is the linear density, which is mass per unit length, maybe it changes. In other words, what if the lambda, for instance, is equal to some constant, let's call it k, or I guess I'll call it c. What if lambda equals c times x? Which means, which is to say that as x gets bigger, as we move this way along the rod, as x gets bigger, the density of the rod gets bigger. That is, the mass per unit length increases as we move along the rod. And I think you can probably, or hopefully you can kind of uh, guess then that if the rod gets denser, that means the center of mass is going to be somewhere over here. It's going to be somewhere on the 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 right-hand side of the geometric center, right? If this is the geometric center right there, if the, if, the, uh, if the rod is getting denser this way, then the center of mass has got to be somewhere over there. But what I'd like to do is see if we can figure out exactly where is that center of mass. So I'll go back to the equation that we had earlier. Earlier we said um, what we did up here, one way I could have written this is that this is a sum I could write this maybe more generally. I could say that x com is equal to the sum of m x over the total mass, the sum of m. And now what we're going to do in the case of this object here, because I don't have a, a series, I don't have a, a, a bunch of point particles, I've got this long rod, what I'm going to do is I'm going to imagine cutting this rod here up into little pieces. So here's a little piece right there, a little itty bitty bitty dm. That is an infinitesimal amount of mass. And this little dm exists in a tiny, tiny, tiny infinitesimal width dx. And we'll say that that particular dm is at a variable position x. So this dm exists at a position x. And now what would I have? Well, I could carve this rod up into an infinite number of these little dms. And then rather than taking what we did up here, which was the finite sum, now I'm going to take the integral, right? I'm going to add up the, the contributions of this infinite number of infinitesimal little dms. In other words, what I'm going to do here is say that x com is going to be the integral of x dm. I'll try to make that bigger of x dm all over m. So again, rather than a finite sum, it's an infinite sum or an integral of x dm all over m. And you can see what the issue is going to be here is that um, uh, the, the variable integ of integration here is dm. That's a mass. That is unit kilograms. But the thing that's varying is x, right? We're going we're gonna to imagine taking this integral from 0, from x equals 0, to x equals l, but um, but dm is not the right variable of integration. So the, here's where I have to come back up to this linear density thing. And what I'm going to notice, or what I'm going to note here for you, is that the linear density, lambda, is equal to dm over dx. That's the ratio of mass per unit length. That's equal to, here, cx. So I'm going to write that this is equal to c times x. Okay, so the lambda, the ratio of dm to dx, the little itty-bitty dm to the little itty-bitty dx varies, and it's equal to cx. That's, that was what one of our givens right here, the linear density. So that means that I could rewrite dm if I multiply both sides here. If I multiply both sides by dx, I can say that dm equals cx dx. Remember, c is a constant. And if I do that, that's going to allow me to rewrite this thing over here as the integral from 0 to L 
of x times cx dx all over m. And now this looks like an integral I'm going to be able to take. So let's do it. This is going to be the integral from 0 to L of cx squared dx all over m. Um, c is a constant, so this is going to end up turning into what? c times x cubed over 3 evaluated from 0 to L all over m. So what does that turn into? Well, that's going to turn into c l cubed over 3 all over m. And here's where you might be thinking to yourself, okay, well, great. maybe you followed that. I hope you followed that. But this does not look like a position, right? The whole point was I wanted a position like x equals something, x equals something. And this doesn't look like x equals something. So now what I want to do is point out there's another way of writing m, right? Because I want to go back up to this thing here. We noted earlier that dm is equal to cx dx. And I can note then that another way of, of expressing m then, I could say that m is the integral of dm. Of course it is. That's the antiderivative of dm is m. So that means I could say that m is the integral from 0 to L of cx dx. And that's going to give me c, the integral of cx dx, that's c times x squared over 2 evaluated from 0 to L. And that means that another way of writing m is simply as c L squared over 2. And now, since this is another word for m, I can plug that in for m down here. And what am I going to get now? I'm going to get then c L cubed over 3 all divided by m which by this chain of logic here, uh, another way of writing m is cl squared over 2. So I'll write that down in the denominator, cl squared over 2. And I'm going to get lots of cancellations now. I'm going to lose the c, which is good. It shouldn't be there. Um, I'm going to lose all but one l on the top. I'm going to lose both l's on the bottom. And then the 2 can come up to the top, and I'm going to get this is equal to exactly 2 thirds L. So if I go back to our example, to our uh, picture up here, what I've shown here is that the center of mass here is exactly at 2 thirds L. That's the center of mass, which is indeed right over here on the right hand side of the geometric center. So I'd say that's a fairly tricky problem, I think. Um, this is a technique that some of you m might not be super familiar with, um, but it is a technique that you are expected to understand to be able to calculate center of mass for an object such as, such as this one.